I am Dr. Patricia Gerbarg. I'm a psychiatrist who's been in clinical practice for over 30 years. I'm also an assistant clinical professor at New York Medical College. I did all my medical training and psychiatric training at Harvard in Boston, Massachusetts. The books most relevant to our topic in this segment will be How to Use Herbs, Nutrients, and Yoga in Mental Health Care, and our latest book called The Healing Power of the Breath, Sleep Problems in Menopausal and Perimenopausal Women are not necessarily due to menopause. Although many women report sleep problems, it used to be thought that these were due to menopause, but more recent studies have shown that most of their sleep problems are not actually due to menopause. Now certainly if a woman has a hot flash and soaks her pajamas in the middle of the night, that might wake her up. But usually the sleep problems are due to other things. So you need to consider the possibilities that the sleep might be due to obstructive sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome. That's a condition in which the legs keep moving or feel like they need to keep moving during the night. Or it may be due to anxiety or stress or other causes. If you're uh, having a difficulty sleeping, the first thing to do is to get an evaluation with a physician and if there are symptoms that sound like it might be obstructive sleep apnea to get a sleep study. It's important to get a correct diagnosis not to just assume that uh, this is due to menopause and if in fact you have sleep apnea to look at the different options to treat that because untreated sleep apnea can cause pulmonary hypertension and many other uh, medical consequences. Now, if you've had a workup and you don't have sleep apnea and you don't have restless leg syndrome, then there are a number of things you can do to help yourself sleep. The most helpful thing I find in my practice is to use certain breathing practices that are calming to the nervous system and particularly we use breathing called coherent breathing which is breathing at a rate of five to six breaths per minute using a chime track on a CD to time the breath. Our book The Healing Power of the Breath teaches these breathing practices and includes a CD that you can follow along and that will guide you in how to doing them, do them properly. Our book the Healing Power of the Breath by Shambhala Press is a CD and book set and by getting that you will be able to learn how to do the breathing practices that will enable you to get a good night's sleep. In addition to breathing practices we recommend good sleep hygiene. That means making sure that during the last hour before you go to bed you do relaxing things that's not the time to do your taxes. That's not the time to go on the internet or to uh, read a Stephen King novel. No, that's the time to do something relaxing. It might be taking a hot bath. It might be doing some breathing, maybe a little yoga, meditation, things that relax you. Or read something really boring. That will help you get to sleep. Also, don't watch television in your bedroom. Believe it or not, you need to train yourself just like you would train anything else and you have to train yourself to feel that the bedroom is the place to sleep not to do all the other things that will help as well so maintain good sleep hygiene and have a set bedtime again training 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 train your system to get ready and go to sleep at the same time every night and make sure that you get enough sleep especially if you are menopausal, perimenopausal. There are certain uh, herbs and that can be helpful for people who are having trouble sleeping. Uh, the one that I like to use first is called melatonin. Melatonin is a natural neurohormone that helps to regulate our circadian rhythms, our sleep-wake rhythms, and it's quite safe. It comes in one and three milligram size tablets and basically you take it at bedtime. Uh, 
Most people who are having sleep difficulties need to take at least three milligrams. Some people need six and some people need nine. I uh, would not recommend taking more than nine milligrams. So try three milligrams first and if that doesn't work you can do a couple of increases. There are some herbs that are helpful. Valerian, passion flower, lemon balm are three herbs that are pretty safe, low in side effects, and mild. Some people have to actually take two or three of them together. So the way to go about this is to start with one. Perhaps you'll start with a little valerian. If that doesn't work, then you can add passion flower. If that doesn't work, you can add the third one. And then you may need to increase the dose a bit. So work with it. Try it out. See if it works for you. It helps many people.